I'm Sharon and welcome back to my channel. So today we will be doing a viola tutorial for The Truth Untold by BTS. And as always, you don't need to be able to read sheet music in order to follow along with this tutorial, but uh, I will have that linked down below in the description if you're interested. And throughout the video, I'll also be making references to the measure numbers in the sheet music. So let's get on with the tutorial. So to begin, let's take a look at the key signature. So for the truth untold, we have four sharps. And those four sharps are F sharp, which is going to be high two on the D string. And then we have C sharp, which is high two on the A string, as well as high three on the G string. Then we have G sharp which is high three on the D string. And then we have D sharp, which is high three on the A string, as well as high one on the D string or high four on the G string. And I gotta admit, the sharps in The Truth Untold are a bit on the difficult side, so I would highly recommend familiarizing yourself with these sharps and making sure you know exactly where the notes are placed, because as you're learning this, that will save you a lot of frustration. Alright, so let's begin into the tutorial. And we're going to start with high 3 G sharp on the D string, and then 1 E. F sharp, which is high two on the D string, and then back to E. So that was the first measure. And the second measure is exactly the same as that first measure. So second measure, and then third measure, which is also the same. Okay, so those are the first three measures. Not too bad yet, right? Alright, so fourth measure, we have a B, which is 2 on the G string, and then C sharp, which is a high 3, and then an A, which is going to be a 4 on the D string. So you could use an open A here, but I would recommend using a fourth finger there, because going from the G string to the D string is a much smaller string change than going from the G string to the A string. Versus this. So whenever possible, you want to try to eliminate those string crossings. So we're going to do a fourth finger A there. And then place the G sharp, which is a high three, right next to that fourth finger A. And make sure these fingers are so close together that they're touching. And make sure that your hand is curved, 
so that your fingers can be as close as possible and that they can be in tune. Continuing on, we are at measure five, and that's E, and then B. So a trick that you can do here is that you can place your first finger down on both the A string and the D string at the same time, so then you don't have to lift your finger up to play one one. Okay, now we have three, and that three is a G sharp, and then three again. High two, high three, back to high two, and then hold that for a quarter, and then one E, and then you're going to do a D sharp next, which is a high four on the G string. So I will admit that as a violinist, this D sharp is very hard for me to reach um, because the viola is so much bigger, and D sharp is just like... It's like all the way over here. So really make sure that you move your elbow and your arm over this way. And you also move your hand and angle it so that it gets more coverage over the neck of the viola. Like that. And then C sharp. So. used to playing uh, like C sharp and D sharp on the G string then you'll probably feel some pulling tension in your bicep and in your arm and just make sure to keep loose and keep uh, practicing it because as you practice your muscles will stretch and it'll become more flexible and it won't be as difficult to reach those notes anymore. So that was measure six. So putting that part together from measure one to measure six sounds like this. <laughs> exactly the same as measure one. Now, the second half of the introduction is almost the same. Uh, there's just a little bit of a difference and I will point that difference out when we get to it. So measure nine, measure ten, and then this is where the difference is. So measure eleven, instead of going back down to the E, you go up to the G sharp. Okay, so that is basically the only difference. Now we are at measure 12, which is the same at, as measure 4. And that concludes the introduction. So now we're going on into the pre-chorus, which starts with a first finger E, and the fourth finger stretch for that D sharp, and then C sharp, hold, four finger D sharp, hold, and then first finger E on the D string, hold it, and then second finger, and then third finger G sharp, and then fourth finger D sharp, and then you're going to play that four times. Repeat that for measure 20. Now we are at measure 21, which is the same as measure 17. And then D sharp, C sharp, B. One point that I want to make here is that phrasing wise, when you are playing a phrase that is going up the scale, typically you want to crescendo, so you want to get louder. And as that scale is going down, you want to typically decrescendo. And this happens in a lot of songs, so uh, it's like it's a very common thing. Let's use measure 17 as an example. So we have C sharp going into D sharp, and then another step higher to E, and then another step higher to F sharp. So that's going up the scale, and because it's going up the scale, you want to crescendo. And then louder, 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 and then the loudest G sharp. And then you have a bunch of D 
sharps after that, going into the C sharp, and then going into the B. So that is going down the scale, so therefore that is decrescendoing. music is that it's a very common pattern that happens with phrasing. So now that we've finished the pre-chorus, we can go into the chorus, which begins in the middle of measure 24. And it starts up bow with two Bs on the G string. And then C sharp. E. F sharp second finger. And then E. We take three G sharps, which is high three on the D string. And then three F sharps going into the E. And then F sharp, E, F sharp, E. G sharp. F sharp. E. C sharp. Second finger B. And then we have G sharp here. So G sharp is going to be a low one on the G string. So this is G, open G, and then sharp is going to be one half step higher. So you're just going to put your finger kind of close to the scroll, like that. And that is G sharp. So going on, we are at measure 29. And then we have one on the A string, B, and then three G sharp. And then G sharp again, and again. F sharp, F sharp, G sharp, F sharp, E. And you're going to hold out that E for a bit. Continuing on, we are at measure 32. So measure 32 is the second half of this chorus, and it is pretty much the same thing as the first half that we just did, so I'm just going to go through it pretty quickly. <laughs> Crescendoing when the notes go up in the scale and decrescendoing when the notes go down. So this is applicable here for the chorus as well. So going back to the beginning of the chorus, which is the middle of measure 24, you have B, B, C sharp, E, and F sharp. So since that's going up in the scale, we want to crescendo. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Now, following that, you have three G sharps and then F sharp. So that is going down the scale, so you want to decrescendo. So you see that last F sharp there? Um, so there's three G sharps and then one F sharp. So that last F sharp there, you want to kind of like fade out a little bit on that note. Same thing. So then you want to apply that same concept for the rest of the chorus and the rest of the song. So now we are at measure 40, and I don't know if this is considered a bridge or not, or if it's just like the last conclusion, the last like couple of measures of the first chorus, but it's the part where they go, but I still love you. So uh, they sing this really, really quietly, and they sing it like they are in defeat. So you need to play it like you are in defeat. We have C sharp, E, fourth finger A, and then G sharp. And you just want to fade away. Okay, so that concludes the contents of this tutorial. What we've covered is from the introduction into the first chorus. And if you want to continue learning the rest of the song, 
Uh, it's very repetitive, so it actually goes back into which is what we've already covered um, in measure one through whatever measure. It's not too difficult to learn the rest of it, and I wish you luck. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments down below and I'll try my best to help out. Thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in more videos like this, be sure to like this video and subscribe as well as share it with other viola k-pop players if you know of any. Bye guys!